Okay, God bless you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to say something. I want to really break this video down to all those who are believers in Jesus Christ. There are a lot of things that come at me because of um, who I'm connected to, whether it be friends, family. Understand something. On this channel and who you're looking at and who you're listening to, I believe in Jesus Christ for healing. I believe in Jesus Christ for miracles. I don't believe in doctors unless they're showing you what's wrong with you. I believe in self-observation, whether it's spiritual or whether it's physical. I believe I've seen miracles. I've operated in miracles with my hands, okay? I have testimonies on YouTube where I have operated out of miracles. Y'all have seen a sister in Christ during COVID. I think that was the last miracle I operated out of um, that I can recall where I can talk about it on this um, channel uh, where you guys could see that it was true. There was a testimony that I've given um, a few years ago. There was a sister in Christ. I'm not sure if she watches my videos still, if she does. Say, hey, you know, give a shout out, you know what I'm saying, about how true this stuff is. But she was dying of COVID. She felt that she was going to die. I prayed with her. It left right away. It was a miracle. She was healed of COVID, okay? Case closed. I don't believe in this, you know, doom and gloom, creepy, hard life, okay? This hardness of life that people try to present to me. It angers me. I don't have patience for it. I don't have time for it. I will remove you out of a room the same way Jesus did, okay? Because your faith is not adequate to pray. You understand? Listen, there is a twisted indoctrination. You're not hearing about it. Just like I said, days ago about the doctrine of oblivion, <laughs> how people act like they're just oblivious of their sins. You're not going to hear about that, but it's like a doctrine. There are things that are like a doctrine, like the doctrine of oblivion, where they act like they're oblivious to their sins. They act like they're not knowledgeable about the meditations of their heart and the words of their mouth. Therefore, they don't know how to, they don't know how to rightly, uh, um, examine themselves and observe themselves, walk circumspectly, all these things that we're called to do. They don't really know about their sins. You hear, you hear Christians saying, I didn't know I was guilty of this sin. I didn't know I had this sin. You'll see videos of people talking about some, I never knew I was guilty of this. I never knew I had this sin. These are signs that they are not walking with God the way they try to promote. These are signs that these people are not really praying really communicating with God, really knowing what the word calls us to. There was a sister in Christ. She always talks about how much she doesn't know about how much she doesn't know how much she doesn't know. But when I ask her, give me an example of one of the things that you don't know. She always goes to one example. Okay. In our past conversations, she's always went to that one example. Okay. So if you're just so oblivious shouldn't you give me several things that god showed you about your sinful state that you never knew about why is it always this one thing and that one thing was like i didn't know that i was greedy okay good after you figured that out that you were greedy you got over it and you moved on and you started walking with the lord right because what are you gonna do what are you gonna do you're either gonna stop and move forward or you're just gonna be like well i didn't know well i didn't know for for the rest of the 365 days of the of, of, of the year, you're going to just sit there and stand in one spot and just say, well, I never knew. I couldn't believe I didn't know that. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, well, that's a shame unto you. Your heart must be callous, right? The scripture speaks against having um, weak a, a weak conscience, okay? You're supposed to be conscientious, okay? You're supposed to have a conscience. You're functioning, okay? You're breathing. You're conscious. You're cognitive, okay? You're comprehending. Why don't you know anything? Like, are you just that? Like, how can you have self-control? How can you ha know what you're thinking? Do you know what you're thinking? Every sin starts with a thought. So there's a doctrine of stuff, right? Well, there's also a doctrine of, you know, this 
medical industry, this medical industry, you know, um, Jesus will still heal me, but I believe in the medical industry, you know, and I'm going to the hospital for this surgery. I'm going to do things the way they're telling me to do things, but I'm going to also bring Jesus into this and make this all of God, okay? While we have the Holy Scriptures showing us that the elders can pray for us, okay? So that we should be connected to the body of Christ, right? Um, we shouldn't have people who we can't call brothers easily and sisters easily that we can just reach out to or, or go to for those Christians who don't believe that we need to be united, right? Because he says, call for the elders, right? To go get the elders so they can pray for you, right? So if you don't got no elders, that's also crushing your, your whole world of church ideology that you think that you don't have to be united with the body of Christ because you got it all together, right? So if you don't like a building and you don't, like the bottom line is you got to have some form of fellowship uniting of saints, okay? If you don't got that, you don't need to be talking like you like you like that because you're not like that because you're going to need some saints, okay? Apart from that, right? Because why? Because James told us that we might need some saints, okay? So go to the elders, right? Otherwise, why are you so great that you could just exalt yourself like you just, you know, you got this because there's a lot of saints online that they don't believe in connecting with the body of Christ, they just believe in connected with that one brother, that one sister, and we good. And that's cool until that person get on your nerve and then you ain't got nobody again. <laughs> you see, now you're back lonely, right? Moving on. Um, so there's also a doctrine of this, you know, um, medical industry, like I said. So you should have saints available, okay? Or you should be having faith available for you to just go to God, for you to just fast. Listen, my uncle just died. My uncle fasted until he died. So how am I going to have any care to listen to anybody? I don't really care about what people have to say. My uncle fasted until he died. How can I listen to what you guys say when my Muslim grandfather, who had several wives, died at 105 in Africa, okay? Do you think he was regularly being seen by doctors and stuff like that? He died at 105. He was in Africa. He wasn't in the luxurious parts, okay? He was among, you know, the poor. He was among the people, you know, who lived the simple life. Farms. I come from a tribe of the Fulani people. I'm Fulani. My family on my father's side are Fulani. They lived on farms. Okay. They lived on farms. They get they the Fulani are known. You can do your research. They're known for herding cattle. That's what they're known for. They specifically herd cattle. They wrap themselves up in that Muslim stuff. They wrap they they kind of got sometimes a little, you know, you see the Fulani hats, like they look like the Mortal Kombat hat, like it, like Raiden, he throws the hat off, the hat off his head. They got the, they wear them Raiden hats. Remember Mortal Kombat? The dude Raiden from Mortal Kombat, he had those hats. That's the people that I come from. Okay. They wear stuff like that. They wear the Muslim garments. Okay. These people, you think they sitting around going to the doctors? <laughs> no, they had to figure it out through herbs, through real medicine, through herbs, through plants. So if I so that's what I'm looking at to my right. This is what I'm looking at to my left, my grandfather, people like him, who just had cancer not that long ago, and now he doesn't have it, okay? Who, who bled out his tumors. Well, my mother saw that as a child, and she's seeing him ble bleed out his tumors. So if I'm looking up to him, right, and I already got the faith that I got when I laid hands on my ex-wife's mother and prayed for her that she be healed from her um flow of blood. Okay. She was bleeding. She bled for two years, right? I prayed for her. The blood left. The, ble the bleeding left. She went back to the hospital to find out it all ended. Okay. So everything was over. Everything that was bad with her and that light ended. So I don't have no time to be fooling around. You see what I'm saying? 
we have to practice what we eat. We have to watch what we eat. We have to eat right. We have to fast regularly. Fasting is healthy. Look at the healthy, non-spiritual uh, things that fasting brings. Now you're adding Jesus to it? Okay, fasting brings extremely powerful, great things to your body. It resets your immune system. It, like... Gets rid of the um, dead cells. It it just it does so many things. It, it 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 you know regularly fasting gets rid of cancerous cells. Okay, in your body. Like so, what are we doing here? Like it's now we're adding Jesus to that, and that already does that because we're all because God already created us to be self sufficient already. I don't have foolish patience for that foolery because the reality is that we're not reading our word faith comes by hearing hearing by the word of god okay so never fool around with people who try to make you look like you're a bad guy for believing in jesus to do it all okay never feel like the bad guy there's always going to be people out here who are going to come at you with this medical field industry doctrine right? Where they try to include Jesus with everything that the doctor is going to say. And all the doctor has to do is all the things that the doctor chooses to do. And they're just going to say, pray for me. Pray for me. Okay. Now I have a sister in Christ who has a friend and the Holy Spirit told me, tell her that if she does not do it my way and to just only do it by faith, she's going to die. She didn't listen to me. She died within months, like two months. Okay. She died right away, like in two months. She didn't listen to me. She mocked me. She mocked me. You understand? She mocked me. This sister in Christ might be looking at this video. She might not be, but she knows this is her friend. Her friend's name was Susan or Shannon. She's dead. Why? Because she didn't listen to the prophet of God. <laughs> she didn't listen to what the Holy Ghost had to say through the prophet of God. You understand? That God ordained for you to listen to. He's hearing God speak. He's reporting it. You listen. Why are you rather listening to a godless person? Why do I have to be the arrogant bad guy but the godless doctor is okay. You see? The godless, uh, uh, he's not fearing God. He might be an atheist. He's good. He's good. But the person who hears from God operates in signs and wonders. He's bad because when he talks, he sounds like this. You see what I'm saying? But guess what? The godless guy he talks like this. Um, yes. You see that? God bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.